Igor, it's not the end. I won't let it end like this. You found Galeb. You left him in the cell for his... Let's change the past, Eagle. Let the little wolf go. You can't leave him in that cage. It's inhuman. The kid should stay in the bunker for now. He's safer in there than outside. Olga, I'm sending the kid to your village. I really hope you thought this through. He'll have to grow up very fast over there. They're not gonna go easy on him. I was out on the streets even younger than him, and I turned out all right, didn't I? The kid's brave. I bet he'll do just fine. The village is the only safe place in the zone. Mikhail tried to convince you. Let's change the and the grid of the city. Okay. Georgi Semenov with Let's do it. Huh? Please help me. I can't believe anything you say. You betrayed us. I won't kill you. But I'm not going to... You and your team, you... Let's change the no, password. I okay. You brought Coslo. Let's try again with this part. Is this a good muscle? You want a passion? So you find what I have. You'll tell me. I don't need to. How do you get a part? You wear this. Do you like you? The smart student. I'm not a murderer. Thank you. You have other. These events have not happened yet as I know you're there, Professor Kaminiuk. Answer the radio. We need to have a little chat. I've got something that may interest you, Igor. 
Please. Are you... General Kozlov, in the flesh. I need to talk to you. Again. Why should I trust you? I don't need you to trust me. Simply listen and draw your own conclusions. But not here. Red Forest. Next to the train station. Come alone. How do I know it's not a trap? You are important, but not that important, Professor Kaminiuk. Besides, there are much easier ways to get to you. Trust me. I don't like this one bit. I know, Professor, but be there anyway. There won't be another chance. That was Kozlov, right? What did he want? Some FaceTime in the Red Forest. The Red For... You can't go. It's too dangerous. Oh, no shit, it's dangerous. When did that ever stop you from sending me on a mission? I'll take every precaution. But all Kozlov has to do is pull a gun and blow your brains out. That's a hard no. This is out of character for you, Olivier. Is there something you need to tell me? No. I mean... I've got a strange feeling about this is all. This trip could end very badly for us. Remember to stay on the radio, okay? I'll help you from here any way I can. Sure. Don't worry so much, Olivier. Someone has to. For the record, going to this meeting is dangerous. Going alone is downright stupid. Watch out for any sign of an ambush, okay? I will. This must be the place. Keep your eyes peeled. Show me your hands. I didn't come here to play cops and robbers, Professor Kaminiuk. If I wanted to get rid of you, you'd be making your bed in a lime pit right now. I can't wait. There's a helipad with an abandoned helicopter next to the railroad. Go there. Find the button that powers it up and press it. What's that supposed to do? Blow me to bits? No. No harm will come to you. Please, indulge me. Then come back and we will talk again. Forget it, Igor. If 
Kozlov has something to tell you. Why didn't he just say it? What are you saying? It's all an elaborate trap. They're going to stuff you into an old tire and set it ablaze. I've seen it many times before. Not a very attractive prospect, but I have to get to the bottom of this. I'm at the helicopter. Kozlov wasn't lying about that, at least. So you think you can trust him now? You can still back out, you know. Come back and we'll hunt this bastard down together. Beneath the helipad. Don't go in there. Please. Let's regroup and we can figure out what to do next. I'll let you know what I find. This is getting interesting. I'm losing you. Surveillance equipment. Can't be Soviet. It looks cutting edge. warehouse operation but they've got everything here my exact words my plans but how is the place bugged Olivier Olivier come in where did you go I thought I lost you for a second there buddy I found a bunch of surveillance hardware in the bunker it must be an old Soviet facility I wouldn't worry about it that's not all I also found intel about me and our mission. Someone is listening to everything we say in the warehouse. Are you certain? Maybe it's just old intel the KGB gathered on you. No, no way. The equipment looks brand new and, goddammit, Olivier, someone's been tracking our every step. We need to talk. You've come seen back it. Soon. I can see it in your eyes. What do you think? That's what I should be asking you. Are you spying on us? My dear professor, you have a brilliant mind for science, but reading people is not your strong suit. No, I'm not spying on you. That is the hidey hole of a rogue operative. To be honest, I only recently discovered it. I'm not sure who he's working for, but I do know who he is. Yes, General? A military man with connections to a foreign agency. Canadian, perhaps? Why did you show me this? Not out of sympathy for my cause, I assume. You assume correct. I have my own reasons. Helping you in this case serves my own interests. I don't know exactly why you're here, Kaminyuk. I'm not entirely sure you know either. You think you know. You have a hunch. Let's say a feeling that you're chasing. You may find it hard to believe, but we're not so different, you and I. We both lost someone. Someone important to us. Someone close. Now we're trying to get that person back. We're all just pieces on a giant chessboard, at the mercy of powerful forces. But much remains unclear, and even a lowly pawn may turn out to be a queen. Enough riddles. You think he's a Canadian? Your best buddy Olivier has been with you the entire time. He's the only person with access to you 
Think about it. Set your emotions aside and you'll see it's the only logical answer. He's working for someone. NAR, maybe. If that's the case, he reports to someone higher in the chain of command even than me. But the whole operation is off the books. So there's definitely something unusual here. Otherwise, I would be the one to handle it. Let's say I believe you. I'm curious where you're going with this. Treat this information about Olivier as an olive branch of sorts. Do you think I enjoy playing the evil Colonel Kurtz in this jungle? No, I do not. I came here believing this would be the last assignment of my career. That working in the private sector would allow me to retire someplace nice with my nephew, Dieb. I'm his only remaining kin. My brother, his father, died in Chechnya. Instead, I've become entangled in a questionable business run by greedy corporate rats and their shady scientist stooges with a god complex. When they sensed I was unhappy, that I might leave, they took Gleb, hid him from me as part of a mysterious safety protocol. In reality, he's a hostage. Am I supposed to feel sorry for you? No, not for me. I've done things I'm not proud of. But Gleb, he could grow up to be a decent man. Help me find him, and I will help you find what you're looking for. Who you're looking for. This can't be a coincidence. There was a little kid, about ten years old. What? You'd better tell me what you know, or this conversation won't continue in such a polite manner. It seems a shred of human decency can be found even in the very nest of evil. Tell the man his nephew is in the village. He's still a servant of the Rat King. But maybe this will soften his black heart. A real hunter doesn't kill cubs. Tell Kozlov he can pick his kiddo up from the village, but I'm still coming after him. I don't know if you believe in coincidence, but I know where Glib is. What? If you know something, you'd better... Easy, General. He's okay. I came across him in an old bunker and freed him. He was being kept... I don't need all the details right now. Where is Gleb? I sent him to the Samrachel village. Matvey and his people are taking care of him. Igor, you truly are a ray of light in all this darkness. I'm proud to have you as my sidekick in the war against the Wrath King. And proud of myself for making such a wise decision. I hope you're not playing games with me, Kaminyuk. But you don't strike me as the kind of man who'd do that. Thank you. Your sense of honor humbles me. It is a rare quality these days. This is where we part ways. I hope we don't run into each other again in... less favorable circumstances. It would be better if you just left the zone, Kozlov. For both our sakes. I wish I could, but it's not that easy. Like I told you before, we're all pieces on the chessboard. I plan to play my part to the best of my abilities. And I know you will too. Best of luck, Professor Kaminyuk. I'll get straight to the point, Olivier. Kozlov showed me your hidden spy bunker. Why would you do that? Why did you betray me? Whoa. Please don't tell me you believed a word of what he said. That man's a liar through and through. Every general is. And this one's old school GRU. Well, well. Who'd have thought? Our soldier boy is a fucking rat. Just shoot him already. I'm tired of his squeaking. What's this? A rat? 
I'll bet a Bucky's a dead rat now. Kozlov made a compelling argument, and all the evidence. But no, I don't believe it was you. We've been through too much together. I'm relieved to hear that. Our warehouse must be bugged. I'll get to work scrubbing the place pronto. It does raise some disturbing questions, though. If it's NAR, why haven't they kicked in our door and gunged us down? You can never know the minds of people like them. Let's not worry about it for now. Everyone, it's time to hit the power plant. We all know it's not going to be easy. We tried before, and not everyone made it. But this time we're smarter and better prepared. I know we can do this. We have to do this. It's the only way we can find Tachana and end NAR. Mercy, you're talking about striking at the heart of the Rat King. But have you learned everything possible about his plans? I have evidence that NAR was conducting Chernobylite experiments back in the 90s. Tachana and her baby were two of their subjects. With the rate at which their technology is progressing, soon, nothing will be able to stop them. We must act now. What about that black mask-wearing motherfucker? Have you identified him? His name is Boris Glukov. He, Tachana and I, were close friends until he betrayed us. He helped the KGB gather evidence against Tatyana, then continued to work for NAR after my accident. He experimented on himself with Chernobylite and ended up with great power. He's strong, one of the strongest, but we can beat him, together. Do you know what NAR is actually doing at the power plant? Why is it so important? A and what does it have to do with Tatyana? NAR wants to create a permanent wormhole to the Chernobylite world and get to its source. Tatiana's abilities are needed to support the space-time bridge. It's hard to know what happens if they succeed. But what they're doing is unbelievably risky. They could unleash something horrific on this world or become unstoppable themselves. But we're never going to know the outcome because we're going to stop them. I like the pep talk, Professor. I think you even gave me a bit of a job. But do we have the right tools for the job? Yes, we do. We've got everything we need to infiltrate the power plant. This is much bigger than anything any of us has done before. If you want to back out, this is your chance. One organization holding this much power is against everything I believe in. And besides, this is personal for me. Count me in. You know how I feel. The Red King must be stopped at all costs, Mousy. I'm in. I started out doing this for a paycheck. But I'm going to end it for my brother-in-arms. 
for Anton. Let's do this. Whatever it takes to protect my people and drive NAR out, I'm on board. Oh, you think I'm gonna back out now and miss the best part? Fuck no! I'm with you, Igor. I appreciate your trust. We can't count on the element of surprise, but we know enough about NAR's vulnerabilities to make this work. Time and again, NAR has shown they would rather capture than kill me. We can use this to our advantage. We'll dress somebody up as an NAR officer, escorting a prisoner. Me. That's our ticket inside. We have two NAR uniforms, both male. Any takers? I'll do it. I have no problem posing as an NAR officer. My hand is still giving me trouble, but I can deal with it. You should take someone who can keep his cool when things go sideways, as they inevitably do. Trust me on that. You're not seriously thinking about going without me? I'm a blast at parties. Ask anyone. All right, we still have one more uniform. Any takers? NAR must have upgraded its digital defense perimeter and surveillance system by now. A skillful hacker should be able to at least temporarily disable them. I'm your man, Mousy. The great rat catcher has blessed me with a knack for that kind of thing. Electronics, surveillance, computers. There's no one better than me. Won't call myself a black hat, but I know enough. As long as we don't get into serious stuff, I should do fine. I need someone to cover our asses in case we end up in the shit. Someone who can take down a target from a distance, or at least create a diversion. Firearms are my preferred method of solving problems, but I can definitely distract them. My shooting's impaired since I injured my hand, but I can manage. What's there to consider? I'm your gal, Igor. Last but not least, a spy. I want someone to monitor NAR activities and keep us informed about their moves. I've been watching these assholes fight the reflection for years. I know how they think. I'm your guy. I know the power plant like a boy knows the woods behind his house. Let me take care of it. Does everyone know what to do? Last chance to reconsider. This is it, my love. The last stretch. You've been through so much for me. Make sure you're ready, because it will take everything you have. Your wits, your strength, your plan, your companion's loyalty, everything. Good luck, my love. This is it. Today's the day, whatever happens. Everything sorted, guys? Can we start our prisoner escort? I'm ready. Though my hand still hurts like hell. If the uniform doesn't get us in, we have one more ace up our sleeve. Their friend enemy party. They say we quell the storm. And we reply and ride the thunder. Remember it. Before we enter the lion's den, I need to triple check everything is ready. How's my techie? Have you logged into their system? I'm in, Mousy. What do you need me to do? Overload their systems, but... There are a few sentries outside the gate. That's obstacle number one. Taking them out quickly is certainly an option. And with the silencer, I should be able to keep my position. It's your call, Igor. Better use the side passage for now. You can always kill them on your way out. <laughs> Don't forget that you're a prisoner, Igor. Downcast. Hopeless. Use this to our advantage. Okay. Showtime. This better work. Oh, who goes there? Stand down, Private, and clear the way. I'm escorting this stalker to his interrogation. Yeah, I mean, yes, sir. Uh, you can find the brass in the tent behind the gates. I assume you know the way? So far, so good. But it's getting harder now. NAR's upgraded some of the old security features. 
feel like anything that leads to be worried. That we've said anything about the Vixie Post courtyard. It's Security checkpoint. What used to be a radiation detector is now a biometric scanner. Clever. I already found the right database. I'll upload your biometric data, and you can walk right through. I can't get a line of sight on all of them. Maybe I should target those fuel tanks on the far side of the gates. That'll keep them distracted long enough for you to slip past. But if we do that, I'll have to fall back from this position. Those NAR security systems can be broken by someone with enough know-how. Those IT wankers probably spent their upgrade budget on pouring off premium content. Once those gates read my biometrics, my cover will be blown. We need to convince them somehow that we're friendlies. Tarakan, I like your thinking. One moment. Yes. Done and done. Those gates won't be a problem, Percy. Time to move. With a little luck, they won't notice us. Trigger the alarm. This will be tough. I can try to remotely unlock the door without tripping the alarm, but no guarantees. You'll have to move very quickly, Mousy. Let me put that guy on the platform to sleep, and you can make as much noise as you want. The lock is wired to the alarm system, but Sashko's charges will destroy both the lock and the trigger mechanism. I should be fine. Right, Olga. Do it. Bullseye! We made it inside. We're safe. At least for now. These tunnels just about make a... What the fuck? The electronics are sizzling as if they're going to explode! That's to be expected, Mercy. The power plant's electrical system is antiquated. Morley, the water, water is electrified. We don't find I have access to the circuit board. Perhaps I can cut power to the nearest corridor. Have you been listening, Mousy? I can turn off the entire sector remotely. No problem. I'll only leave the light on at your location. I can't shoot the switchboard, can I? I would have to go there in person, which would almost certainly compromise my position. I'll be out of the game after that. Tarakan, I like your thinking. Today, the darkness is our friend, Mousy. You're completely now safe.
getting close to the reactor floor. I think we managed to dodge the main security detail. As long as we maintain our cover, we should be good. Step very fucking lightly now, Igor. The... I'm in the Golden Corridor. It looks like NAR beefed up security after our little escapade. Not unexpected. Don't be a fool, Igor. Let me take care of it. If I can take them all down silently, they'll be dead before they know what hit them. We have to convince NAR that we're their contractors. That's our ticket inside. Let's try the prisoner escort charade. Just act bored. Stop right there. I don't recognize you, soldier. We quell the storm? And ride the thunder. Prisoner transport in progress, Private. Okay, go ahead. We need to get past these scientists. I can help you, Gore. You don't need sniper cover at this point anyway. I'll come closer and see if I can stir up some trouble and get the scientists to evacuate. That'll clear the area if necessary. The Bradiacs have their own dedicated comms. I could put my fabulous acting skills to work and tell them to fuck off, but it's a two-man job. The great rest catcher has smiled upon you today. I can help. They're not soldiers. They won't buy our fairy tale. If we don't come up with something convincing, they'll sound the alarm the moment they see us. Tarakan, I like your thinking. Sounds good, Mercy. It shouldn't take long to hack the comms. Attention! Nemanja! Achtung! The reactor's about to explode! Run for your lives, everyone! What kind of nonsense is this? The reactor cannot ex- Fuck it, Anatoly. A break is a break. Ventilation will take me straight to the Ark. What the hell is this? Was it here before? Looks like some sci-fi fucking movie prop. The door is trapped. Touch it, and I'll spend my last moments on Earth convulsing on the dirty floor. This door wasn't supposed to be here. Mousy, the ventilation duct should not be secured. The Red King is watching and waiting. I can feel it. The main generator is in sight. If I sabotage it, you'll have a few moments before the backup comes online. Wait, Igor! Remember the map you borrowed from that fucker Semenov? It shows another way in. Guess it was worth it in the end, huh? Your plan sounds reasonable, Mikhail. Do it. The doors are behind you, Igor. Cut through the crap on the other side, and you'll find a nice, fat ventilation duct. Climb up in there, and it'll take you straight to the Ark. Seeing those creatures. I hope the bars hold. I might be able to open the gate from this panel, but there's a chance I'll release the things in those cages as well. Do you still have some of my explosives? Would really come in handy about now. So, this is the heart of darkness. Just as menacing as I imagined it to be, I will gladly burn it all to the ground. The NAR will track me down afterwards, but I don't care. 
I have reached my destination, Eagle. This place is one big fucking trap and totally off grid. The only way to open it from where you are is to crash the whole system. Unless you have some explosives. The Ark is just outside. Luckily, I still have some of Sasko's explosives. I can put them to good use here. All right, we're taking this gate down. We'll have to fight our way out. These guys are the last thing standing between me and Tatiana. I can't back down now. I'll fight my way in if I have to. I've got an idea, Igor. I know a way to turn this around. There's still some charges left. I can sneak past the soldiers and detonate the main gasoline tank. Trust me, I'm not in that much of a hurry to die, but I don't see any other choice. Oh no. This sucks big time balls. I wish we had someone inside who could get those assholes to look the other way. Attention all units! What the? This is General Kozlov speaking. All troops, stand down and evacuate the building immediately. That is a direct order. Kozlov? He was silent for so long. I thought he was dead. Don't keep the general waiting. Outside, now. Hi, Igor. Bieb says hello. And also, goodbye. Kozlov? My nephew told me what you did for him. He asked me to return the favor. I've always had a soft spot for that boy, so... This is your lucky day. Me and Glee are leaving this place for good. We're going to disappear where NAR can't ever find us. I would advise you to do the same. But I know you won't listen. Good luck, Igor. May you find whatever it is you're looking for. Thanks. And good luck to you both. Everyone, wait here and watch the perimeter. I have to do this alone. Tatiana! Finally. Well, well, Professor. Igor, my love. My child. It's been so very long. But it's finally you. It has to be you. You know it in your heart, my love. I've been calling out to you for all these years, and you answered. But how? You shouldn't be here. It's a mistake. You'll only bring great misery on us all. My poor little boy. All of us together, finally. Release me, my love. Free me. What did you call me? I don't understand. What can I do? There's nothing you can do. You have to end this. Both of us. We were a mistake. An abomination. Close the portal. Destroy the connection. W what connection? The connection is the strongest force in the universe. It cannot be destroyed. It has to be completed. It is our destiny. Go to the reactor. Find it, my love. It is waiting for you. Find what? No more waiting. Please, can't you just let me die? I can't take any more. Tanya? Go. Die. Fade. Portal. Tatiana, are you still there? Boris, help! Die! Igor! I don't understand. Oh, fuck! Reactor, Chernobylite. What, what do I do? Oh, fuck, I need to figure this out! Hi, Igor. Happy to see me. Olivier, what are you doing? Do you really need to ask? Did you think I was an idiot right from the beginning? Put the gun down. Whatever it is, we can work it out. You're such an asshole. 
I've been helping you all this time. I made sacrifices. I lost my best friend just to help you find this dear old lady of yours. Olivier, please. Not once, not fucking once, did you offer to help me. It was always about you. Semenov was right after all, every word. Semenov? What's he got to do with... wait. Yes, I was working for Semenov. He hired me to keep tabs on you. It went pretty well until your black mask buddy went off piste and killed Anton. But Semenov, why would you work for that lunatic? What could he possibly offer? Oh, I don't know. Maybe a chance to change what cannot be changed? To go back in time and save my squad? But that's crazy. Crazy, sure. Is it any crazier than going for an interdimensional walk in a tunnel through space-time? I'm not saying it's impossible, but... But helping me was never on your agenda, was it? I should have seen it sooner. Besides, you're not the only one experiencing strange fucking things, you know. I keep having these dreams where I die. I wake up and I live again. I see our friends being killed because of your screw-ups. Then it's a new day and everything's normal again. It's motherfucking Groundhog Day in hell. What do you have to say to that? I don't know what to tell you. You're right. I just never thought anyone else would see it. I thought it was only me. Sure, sure. Semenov isn't the one with the Messiah complex. You are. But today the Messiah descends from the clouds and helps his companions, right? Like I said, it's not impossible. But this is neither the time nor the place. Not good enough, Igor. I'm serious. I'm serious too. We don't know what's behind that door. Semenov wanted me here for a reason. And it wasn't to destroy Chernobylite. So I promise you, once we see this through, I'll do everything in my power to help... Say it. To save my team. To save your team. Okay. That's good enough for me. I'm glad we understand each other. All right, I'll be back. Keep an eye on Tanya. Sure. I just hope you don't screw things up and get us all killed. Again. I'm tired of this carousel of madness. Took your time, Igor. Cut the crap. It's time you gave me some answers. Yes, we'll get to that. But since this is our last meeting, I want to ask you a question first. Fine. Just make it quick. What do you really hope to achieve, Igor? Chernobylite is the cause of all this. I have to destroy it once and for all. You may find this surprising. But our goals are actually aligned. How's that? We were both going after the same thing. But this whole time, we've been chasing someone else's agenda without knowing it. Chernobylite's agenda. Come on, man. I've come too far to be fed a line of bullshit. Let's start from the beginning. Do you know who I am? I sure do, Boris. You were my closest friend until you decided to betray me. To take Tachana from me. Boris is dead. I killed him on that fateful night. April 26th, 1986. And took his identity. Good riddance. He was a treacherous piece of shit. You took it? Why? The more important question, the question you somehow failed to ask yourself all this time is... Who are you? Because you're not Professor Igor Kiminyuk. You never were. I am Igor Kiminyuk. I only changed my name to protect you and your mother. Protect me? How? By trying to kill me at every turn? If I wanted to kill you, I would have done it the first time we met at the power plant. 
Will you quit talking in fucking riddles? The truth is hard to swallow, I know. It was hard for me, too. You are me. Tachana isn't your fiance. She's mine. Everything you know about her, everything you remember, none of it is yours. You're living someone else's life. My life. You are my clone, sort of. You got my body, my brain, my skills, and most importantly, my memories from before the Chernobyl disaster. What are you saying? How is that even possible? Tatiana was sterile. That was our personal tragedy. But when Semenov imprisoned her after the Duga fiasco, she fell pregnant. At first, I thought Boris was the father, and I was angry with her. But that was another of Semenov's lies. He needed me to stay on the project and study Chernobylite, so he injected Tanya with the nano solution. What happened next was, I don't know what to call it, an immaculate conception. She gave birth to a boy, you. You grew much more quickly than other kids, but your mind didn't seem to follow. It was different somehow. The Chernobylite no doubt affected you in unpredictable ways. I never really considered you my son. You scared the shit out of me. I didn't know what to do with you. But it was obvious that Semenov would incorporate you into his experiments. Or maybe cut you open and rummage around inside. Until one night, Tanya, your mother, communicated with me telepathically, even though her body was in a coma. She pleaded with me to release you into the woods. And that's what I did. You're saying Tatiana's child who you released in the woods in 1990? But that's impossible. Impossible! I don't remember any of this! Of course you don't. You looked like a teenager that had the mind of a small child. I remember giving you a sweater that Tatiana knitted for me. The night was so cold. It had my name on it. The sweater? I had it in the camp. I was imprisoned. Yes, it could have been a trigger. Your mind somehow began to rebuild itself. Why in my image? I can only guess. Perhaps you were constructed from Tatiana's desires, from her expectations of a child. Funny how I called it pseudoscience. I suspect the process was somehow facilitated by the Chernobylite. But she's been calling me this whole time. She wanted me here. I'm afraid you were bamboozled, my poor boy. We all were. It wasn't Tanya who called you here, but it. Chernobylite? But the images, the voices. They felt so real, I know. Your mother was your biggest weakness, and the entity exploited that. It wanted you here. It has plans for you, you see. And I cannot allow it to succeed. Someone sent me a photo of Tatiana and the piece of Chernobylite. Those weren't hallucinations. They were real. I couldn't have constructed my portal gun without them. Oh, that. It was that bastard Semenov, of course. He wanted to bring you here as well. He never got over it when you vanished. Not that it matters now. I really hoped you would stay away. But it's too late now. I can't allow you to interact with the Entity in any way. Only one of us is leaving this room alive. Wait. Can't we talk it over? We just did. Goodbye, son. Igor. I wish there was another way.
don't need a force field to defeat you. I told you to watch Tanya. How on earth did you get in here? Focus, Igor. Look familiar? Where did you get that from? Where else? I took it from you. From your cold, dead hands, Igor. I... what? Where? When? In a reality where you fucked up, my friend. From one of the many worlds bearing the brunt of your failures. Are you saying that you come from a different... that you're from... <sighs> this is hell. You have no idea. Where are you going? Back to my screwed up world, of course. You know me. I'd prefer to die fighting. Wait! Don't waste the chance I've given you, Igor. Finish the job. My son, close the portal, cut the connection, deny this thing away into our world. Do it now! Son, please, it will kill her. It will kill the love of my life, of our life. Please, there's another way. Just let me go. I've suffered long enough. You can do this, son. You can be the man I could not. Be the better version of me. Go through the portal and face this thing. Undo the harm we both caused Tanya. No, do not do this. Kill me. Just kill me, please. Finish it. It's time to end this once and for all. If anyone can hear me, run as far from here as you can. Everyone, run like hell. Thank you for showing me the way. I won't waste this, I promise. Goodbye. You can rest now. The protagonist never explained to his comrades exactly what happened at the power plant, but he came out changed. The Chernobylite vanished entirely. The zone is now free of it. Igor Stalkers drove off the remaining NAR troops and even convinced a few of them to join the cause. Now they're working together for the good of the Samo shells, tracking down the few remaining monsters still roaming the area. Olivier never had the chance to change his own history and prevent the ambush that wiped out his team. Igor's example convinced him to abandon his plan and accept his flawed past. That tragedy, after all, made him the man he was. With time, he made his peace and, in the end, was grateful to be part of something bigger than himself. Once the events in the zone were finished, he sought out Anton's fiance and took care of both her and her daughter. In spite of his flaws, Olivier will always be remembered in the zone for his courage and grit. Mikhail's life was always full of violence. He was the angriest, most obnoxious man Igor had ever known, but he was also unfailingly honest, both with himself and others. 
Mikhail's thirst to avenge his murdered friends was his main driving force. But working with Igor and the others eventually made him appreciate the kinder aspects of life. In spite of his rough manner and the darkness inside him, Igor came to like the neurotic stalker and by the end considered him a true colleague. Mikhail decided to remain in the zone and join the others in protecting their shared home. Sashko had always been the lone wolf and daredevil of the zone. Life had always been harsh for him, and he learned the hard way to rely only on himself. His crusade against NAR began with a desire for closure regarding his brother Ruslan's death, but Igor's quest to find Tatiana was what kept him going until the finish line. After the events in the zone, Sashko decided to go back to Moscow and face the hard truth about his parents' death. Eventually, he would return to Pripyat, which became his second home. Tarakhan's fight against the Rat King has reached an end. Having barely survived the zone, he realized his time was up. Now, someone else must carry the torch and defeat the evil lurking in the power plant. But Tarakan wasn't worried. After all, he had prepared Igor and others well. Tarakan's true identity was never discovered. Was he a madman, a saint, a spy? Perhaps he was all of these, or perhaps none of them. But one thing is certain, the old man was a true child of Pripyat. His restless soul will forever wander its marshes and woods. When all was said and done, Olga's thoughts went to her mother and the Samoshils. She had joined Igor in his mission because she knew what it meant to live with a hole inside you, a hole left by the departed. As a troubled teenager in Minsk, she'd never planned to become a freedom fighter or martyr, but sometimes we encounter the person who will change our destiny at just the right moment. Life is unpredictable that way. Olga decided to continue serving as the huntress and ranger of Pripyat's forests, striking fear into the hearts of anyone who wished harm upon her people. Like so many before him, General Koslov made the wrong choices while chasing a dream of the good life. War taught him about the cruelty and inevitability of loss, leaving him indifferent to human suffering. It was only thanks to his nephew Galib and Igor that Koslov found a serendipitous moment that placed his life on a new trajectory. He realized that some victories come at too great a cost. Koslov left NAR at just the right time and lived out his days in quiet contemplation, somewhere far beyond their nefarious grasp. Semenov's ambitions and neuroses eventually got him killed. He was a brilliant scientist, but could never come to terms with the collapse of the Soviet Union. Though not a devout communist, Semenov could not stomach the chaotic aftermath, for it reflected the emptiness of his own heart. And so he chased his green Chernobylite dream, hoping his experiments would usher in a new world order. In reality, what he sought was to fill the gaping void in his own soul. In the end, everything he thought he had achieved disintegrated into nothing. He died and NAR dissolved, most of its mercenaries wiped out by either the shadows or the Samoshils. All that remains of NAR in the zone are the empty barracks and derelict labs, stark reminders of a misguided ambition based on human misery. Faced with staggering losses, the shareholders halted all funding, 